Hi, my name's Caroline Briggs. I'm the Assistive Technology Officer and Academic Developer here at the University of Cumbria, and my pronouns are she and her. I was born with a disability, a hypermobility, which as, as a child didn't impact on my uh, childhood at all, really, other, other than get, get, getting time off school to go to hospital and to go to physiotherapy on a regular basis. So I went to the specialist again and had an operation to try and um, secure and stabilise my ankles. I had one done and then potentially the other one done. And after the first operation, unfortunately, I got a, a condition which is quite rare called regional pain syndrome type two. And this unfortunately left me not being able to have the other, other foot done. And it wasn't as successful as it could have been because of the amount of movements in my ankles. So I was left with a chronic pain condition and my hypermobility. And the two together at the age of 19 was really debilitating. And to, to be fair, it, it is now. I'm also neurodiverse, so I have struggles uh, in relation to anxiety and my environment. I was walking with a stick at this point because of the falls and I wore ankle and, and I do wear um, ankle splints, which prevent me from falling. And some of my experiences within interviews, I had one interview where they asked me to lift up my trouser legs so that they, they could see um, well, what it was they were dealing with. And I, I didn't get that well. I had another interview where they said I looked like I was going skiing, wearing ski boots. And it was really hard. I, I, I'd never been turned down for roles. And I, I, as I say, I was, you know, a confident young person. And it had a, a big impact on me. It had a big impact on my mental health at such a young age. And I became my, my confidence dropped. I found the experience to be very different, far more enabling, far more positive. It was difficult being neurodiverse, having the new environment and the new people, but it was a much more aspirational environment. And I found that I blossomed in that environment. So I jumped at the opportunity to do a teaching qualification alongside my last year of my um, business and computing qual. So the job was teaching uh, students IT, but during that period, I found that there was one colleague who came up, up to me and um, referred to me as Little Britain which I think these days I would respond very differently. I was, I was quite young then, 23, when I got my first role. And it did knock me, it did, because it was insight into how I was seen. If you think of the character in Little Britain would jump off out, out, out of the wheelchair and go swimming in the background or hiking or something. And just couldn't get their head round what disability to them looked like that box, I didn't fit in it. So on the whole, I found working in further education and high, higher education um, a positive experience. But I do have quite a large number of instances where things have happened to do with my difference. For example, when I did use my wheelchair, I'm not using it at, uh, at the moment, but I found that people would push me out of the way, which just blew my mind. I mean, I understand now why wheelchair users um, don't have handles on the back of their wheelchairs. And it, it ne never occurred to me before being a user um, that that would happen, but it happened a lot. I also, with my stick, I find that people pick up my stick and 
play with it and mess with it and quite comical with it and I it's quite personal it, it, it's part of you know who, who who I am and it's a little bit like if you were to take off your glasses and somebody was to pick them up and put them on and start messing with your glasses you wouldn't feel comfortable at that and you wouldn't like that and, the, and, and that's kind of the best, best thing I can liken it to and it is, it, it's, it's difficult, it is, it highlights my difference and it's okay for people to be different in the workplace, we really need that to be something that people are more comfortable with and I think that that's why I'm doing this video is to try and highlight that disability is not the stereotype that we see on te television. Uh, it's just people with a collection of um, differences. And if there was a box for people with disabilities or neurodiversity to put into, none of us would fit in it. The COVID pandemic has had an impact on all of our lives. And for some people has been uh, a very negative experience. For me, from a working perspective, it has been a positive experience. I, being able to work in a sedentary way with my strategies, coping strategies around me, I'm able to do more, attend more meetings um, and manage my diary. I think from my point of view, the pain levels that I'm experiencing have definitely reduced and also the falls. When I do trip or slip, my ankle will partially dislocate, which is very, very painful. In the home, the amount of moving around is considerably less, and yet I'm still able to carry out my daily job, not better than before, really. Something that I take away from the COVID period of working from home is thinking about other disabled people that aren't able for one reason or another to work within the workplace from the point of view of a building um, and the opportunities that could be there if organisations were to embrace the working from home model. And think of the large level of unemployment of those with disabilities and neurodiversity that could really be impacted upon by just a slight change in working practices. I'm the chair of the Disability and Neurodivergent Network. It's a new group with membership growing. It's made up of people with disabilities, neurodivergence, and also allies. The aim of the group is to bring together colleagues in a safe place where we can share our experiences and influence policy. One of the things that I've heard and really liked was the saying of no discussion about me without me. And I think that really encapsulates one aspect of the group. Mm -hmm.